Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-67. Last time, the party successfully raided the tomb of Thane Draka and came out on top to spies a surprise in the stone coffin. With the resting place sacked, the group quickly recalled that the orc chieftain may or may not have been alone, and their mounts, along with Peepers the Axebeak, had been left unguarded topside. We rejoin them as they hustle through the stone passage to the stairs leading up. The group came to a halt behind Fargus the ranger who stopped her regain his breath. Cabe Silvertongue and Sister Elaine wanted him to stop blocking the way as did a nearly frantic Karina the Waif. After hushing the others the human began to explain in a whisper. Look, we don't know what's up there. Could be nothing, could be a trap, could be a tribe of orcs looking to skin us all. I want to stop gather our wits and figure out a plan, said the large warrior. The others shook their heads, realizing that they may very well be walking into a camp filled with angry humanoids. Thinking for a few moments, the ranger shook his head and stated he had no good solutions for this mess. Karina shoved her way past the others and requested she be allowed to go first. She pointed out that she was the most nimble and, if Peepers was still alive, had the best chance to control the axe beak. Looking to the other members of the group, Fargus stepped aside. The waif quickly scaled the curving stairs and a few moments later yelled down for the party to come up. Charging up the stairs with weapons drawn, the group noticed that it was dusk and the mounts were nowhere to be seen. Lady Irena and Cabe Silvertongue scanned the burnt veil and subsequently spotted their transports. The mage reported that the horses and peepers were running from a large group of humanoids that appeared to be intent on catching and killing the mounts. The dusk was no friend of the human eye, so Cabe directed the waif to whistle in the general direction. The high-pitched wail emitted from the young woman's lips was picked up by the axe beak, who turned the mounts back towards the entrance at a full sprint. Here they come, announced the bard, who readied himself. The humans and gnome pointed out that they could not see what was going on and needed insight. As Lady Irena dug through her backpack, Cave explained that Peepers had snatched up the reins of the mounts and was nearly dragging them towards the group's location. He pointed out that about 15 orcs were in hot pursuit of the horses but were starting to fall behind. He faced the group and looked grim. They appear to be experienced fighters, he warned. Fargus began to position everyone in a half circle telling Karina to have Peepers and the horses go past the group until the orc pack could be dealt with. As the five members braced for a savage fight, Lady Irena withdrew one of the scrolls she had located previously and began to scan it. With peepers dragging the exhausted horses behind it, Karina waved it to the side just as a shower of arrows from the orcs hit the ground in front of the group just behind the horses. Karina turned around to face the orcs, tightly gripping her weapon. The group was so focused on the onslaught of the orcs that they didn't hear the elven mage read off her scroll. A long line of orcs headed right for the center of the party's defenses as a bolt of electricity jumped from the scroll and blasted through the first several orcs in lines, scorching them badly. A total of seven orcs went down with burning holes in their chest as the lightning bolt fizzed on the eighth, causing him to stagger and fall to one knee wounded. The back three orcs saw what had occurred and quickly turned around and began to flee for their lives as the other four hit the party's line to attack. Blades clashed and Sister Elaine's mace wonked one of the orcs in the face, smashing out a tooth. Fargus had launched himself at one while Bulger and Karina engaged another. The orc going after Cabe lunged at the bard who quickly sidestepped and stuck out his foot, tripping the larger humanoid, who crashed to the ground. The orc on Sister Elaine returned blows slashing her religious robes open at the thigh and drawing blood causing the woman to yell out in pain. Her anger boiled over as she threw the mace up, quickly cracking it into the orc's jaw and knocking him out. A smile crossed her lips, but was erased as the previously stunned orc with the burnt chest tackled her. 
Cabe gave a coup de grace to the stumbled orc and moved towards the downed cleric. Fargus had his hands full with his assailant, but a quick spin and slashing move cut the orc's throat, causing blood to gush all over the ranger's tunic and armor. Bulger and Karina also made quick work of their opponent, but each was cut during the fight. As Sister Elaine struggled against the last orc, it got its blade free and began to stab the woman in the chest. Magic missiles from Lady Irena sprang forth and finished off the orc warrior before he could stab the Reverend Daughter, who quickly kicked the dead orc off of her. The group was on their feet and making sure no other orcs were left alive, then checked on each other. Noting no serious wounds, the group gathered their breath and had the Elvish members scan for additional threats. Cabe stated that the three runners were not even looking back and were not likely to return as they had already dropped their weapons in the fight. Damn it! exclaimed Bulger the gnome. The party whirled around and braced for another onslaught but saw the former sailor bending over the broken bottles of old wine. Damn, orcs have no respect for the spirits. Karina looked behind her to see a pensive peepers waiting for the return sign. Another whistle and the axe beak trotted up to the party and cooed to his mistress. The party members each checked their mounts and discovered that two had been injured and two more had arrows in their saddles. Fargus gave a sigh of relief and pointed out that they had been quite lucky in the issue. Wounds were attended to to both the party and their mounts and it was decided that camp would have to be made due to the hour. The group considered putting up a tent but felt the orcs already knew they were here and an escape would be easier without the burden of breaking down the tent. Bulger gathered a few pieces of wood that hadn't been burned and set up several small fires along the perimeter. He reasoned that the fleeing orcs probably couldn't count and the presence of multiple fires may dissuade them from coming back for a look. The group opted to do two sets of three-person guard duty, with Cabe in one group and Lady Irena in the other. The option of having dark vision on both shifts was a prudent option that they all agreed to. The night was calm but rough on the nerves of everyone present as they tried to sleep in the hostile land. The morning came too quickly and no one seemed to get much sleep. The new day started with a warm drizzle, further dampening the party's spirits. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.